A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to daily newspaper analysis of Shankara AS Academy. Today's date is 10th July 2024. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much ado, let us get into the news article discussion. Look at the science page article. It talks about a new finding of a research regarding nanoparticles. In an experiment done at IIT, applying a high voltage to mineral microparticles in water produced a mist of micro droplets. This micro droplets quickly break down the minerals into nanoparticles. So this is what the article is talking about. Here we should see what is the potential implication of this breakthrough. See, firstly, the ability of micro droplets to break down the minerals has applications in fields like agriculture where silica nanoparticles can help plants grow better. It can also be used in the study of protocells which are relevant to understanding the origin of life. Since the impact of nanoparticles in the field of agriculture is a favorite topic for UPSC, we shall see about it briefly in this news article discussion. Nanoparticles derived from micro droplets have the potential to significantly enhance plant growth as I said earlier. For example, plant absorb silica in the form of nanoparticles more efficiently which helps them grow taller and stronger. This is particularly seen in the crops like rice which naturally contain high level of silica. Moreover, nanoparticles can improve the efficiency of nutrient uptake by plants resulting in healthier and more robust crops. Then in terms of soil improvement, adding silica nanoparticles to soil can enhance its fertility making it more productive for crop growth. This can be essentially beneficial in reversing desertification as introducing nanoparticles into desertified areas can help turn unproductive land into fertile farmland. By improving soil health, nanoparticles play a crucial role in supporting sustainable agriculture. Apart from this, nanoparticles also contribute to increased disease and pest resistance in plants. They can be engineered to have pesticidal properties reducing the need for chemical pesticides and lowering the risk of pest infestation. Additionally, nanoparticles can help pest resist diseases by strengthening their cellular structures leading to healthier and more resilient crops. Another significant benefit of nanoparticle is improved water retention in soil. See nanoparticles can help soil retain water more efficiently reducing the need for frequent irrigation and conserving valuable water resources. This is particularly important in areas prone to drought where effective water use is critical for sustainable agriculture. Lastly, using nanoparticles in agriculture will reduce chemical use by enhancing soil and plant health naturally. The use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides can be reduced. This will promote sustainable agricultural practices. Thereby, nanoparticles can minimize the runoff of harmful chemicals into waterways, eventually protecting the ecosystem. These are all very important facts that you have to remember about nanoparticles and their implications and it is actually a great breakthrough so remember this finding as well now with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this article it talks about the ongoing bio mining project in perungudi dump yard which is part of the swachh bharat mission this project will be completed by august 31 this is what the article is talking about so let us understand briefly what is bio mining and some of its benefits so what is bio mining bio mining is an alternative method of extracting minerals using microorganisms for example using bacteria to extract copper from ores in this way we can say that the bio mining is also a sustainable method of waste management remember there are different methods used in the bio mining to extract minerals we'll see them one by one first is bio leaching in this method the low grade ore will be soaked in weak sulfuric acid this will encourage bacterial growth and breaks the ores and separate metal secondly bio oxidation here the ores will be exposed to bacterial oxidation this will degrade the insoluble components in the ore thirdly dump leaching in this method the metals will be dissolved using chemicals mostly acid then the metals will be collected and processed fourthly agitation leaching see this process is used to extract minerals from the soil here the soil will be slurried along with the extraction fluids so these are different methods used in bio mining 
Now apart from this, they also play a major role in disaster management. For example, a bacteria called Pseudomonas putida is used for absorbed oil from sea and water bodies in the case of oil spill. The biomining is also used in environment conservation, for example to convert high toxic metals into less toxic metals and also for waste water treatment. Talking about the benefits of this method, see firstly it is environment friendly. Since we are using bacteria for extracting metals, the carbon emission will be less. Secondly, cost effective. The bio mining cost for copper is 30 percentage lower than the traditional method of mining. Thirdly, less energy intensive than the traditional mining. However, bio mining has also certain disadvantages. For example, it's time consuming and there is leakages. So to sum up, biomining has a great future apart by working on these two disadvantages and the upcoming eco-friendly park project of the great Chennai corporation is highly appreciable and also a role model. These are certain facts that you have to remember about biomining from the prelims perspective. Just make a note of it and revise it. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about RBI's Financial Inclusion Index. The March 2024 Financial Inclusion Index recorded a growth in the value than March 2023 from 60.1 to 64.2. That is why RBI's Financial Inclusion Index is in news. So let us revise about what is this FII from the prelims perspective. As I said earlier, the Financial Inclusion Index is released by RBI with the aim to assess the financial inclusion in the country. So what is financial inclusion? Financial inclusion means ensuring access to adequate and timely financial services to every section in the economy including people from socially and economically vulnerable. This financial inclusion is considered as a direct indicator of development because through financial inclusion we can achieve six SDG goals. You can see that in the image given here. Remember the value of the financial inclusion index ranges from 0 to 100. Here 0 means low financial inclusion while 100 means high financial inclusion. To prepare this index, the RBI considers 97 indicators in which access, usage and quality are three broad parameters. Remember these. Talking about the application or the significance of the index. See firstly it helps in policy making. As we said FII is an indicator of development. It can be used for preparation of government schemes. Secondly it strengthens India's role towards achieving sustainable development goals. Thirdly it aids in inclusive development. This will be focusing more on women and other social and economically vulnerable people. Now we shall see the steps taken to ensure financial inclusion in India. Firstly, digitalization. This will ensure timely delivery of financial benefits to every region of India including the remote area. For example, the Digital India Mission. Secondly, government schemes like Jandan Yojana to promote bank account for everyone. Then PM. Jan Aurogya Yojana, world's largest health insurance scheme, PM Fasal Bhima Yojana, insurance for crops and etc. Thirdly, identity based payment or other payment. These type of payment will reduce the leakages and ensure payment to the right person. So these are all facts that you have to remember about financial inclusion index. Remember it is released by RBI annually. RBI considers 97 indicators in which access, usage and quality are three broad parameters. You can use it in your main answer writing as a point as well. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this opinion page article. You might have recently seen in news that Jake Sullivan, the US National Security Advisor, is visiting India and engaging in bilateral discussions. This article is written in the backdrop of discussion between India's National Security Advisor, Ajit Dhawal and US counterpart Jake Sullivan. The talk aimed to move forward with the initiative on critical and emerging technologies in short called as ICET. However, there are big challenges in making this initiative happen. The main problem is that US defense companies don't want to share their technology. These companies have spent a lot of money developing their ideas and are protected by strict US laws about exporting technology. Because of this, they are not willing to share important military technologies even if 
it would help both countries right now icet in india is mainly focusing on making turbofan engines for the tejas mark 2 plane and mq9 reaper or predator b drones however the amount of technology being transferred is not very high this shows that there are still big challenges in getting all the technologies that india need to become independent in defense technology this is what the article is talking about in this backdrop let us learn few points regarding the topic using our mains answer writing approach this question can be clearly asked in gs paper 2 either in bilateral relations or in gs paper 3 let me read out the question for you discuss the significance of the initiative on critical and emerging technologies icet in deepening engagement between india and united states with special focus on defense cooperation moving on to the introduction part here you can write that the initiative on critical and emerging technologies shortly known as icet is a collaborative effort between india and the united states to work together on new technologies that are crucial for various industries including defense and national security it aims to advance cutting edge innovations through joint projects and technology sharing so by mentioning these points you can give a simple introduction about icet for this question moving on to the main body of the answer first you have to list the significance of icet with reference to defense partnership between india and us as we have seen icet initiative aims to facilitate the transfer of advanced technologies and promote joint development projects thereby enhancing india's defense capabilities and interoperability with us forces see here the keyword interoperability is important in context of defense sector it means the ability of computer system to exchange and make use of information now before discussing the significance first we shall know about the important defense cooperation agreement and engagement between india and usa see the signing of key agreements like the logistics exchange memorandum of agreement lemoa in 2016 then communications capability and security agreement com casa in 2018 and the basic exchange and cooperation agreement for geospatial cooperation bca in 2020 has laid the groundwork for deeper defense cooperation these agreements facilitate seamless logistical support secure communications and enhanced geospatial intelligence sharing between the two countries here it is enough to mention about these deals in single line lemoa allows india and the us to use each other's military base for refueling and supplies to boost operational flexibility then com casa ensures secure communication and data sharing between their military equipment for better cooperation then beka enhances sharing of geospatial information improving accuracy in military targeting and navigation during operations one of the important significance other than this is strengthening bilateral defense ties icet facilitates the transfer of advanced technologies and joint development projects this can significantly boost the military capabilities of both nations by collaborating on defense technologies the us and india can develop cutting edge weapon system cyber security measures and other defense solutions tailored to their strategic needs apart from this strategic alignment and regional stability are reinforced by icet this contribute to the stability and security of the indo pacific region this alignment counters the influence of other regional powers and promotes a rule based order enhanced cooperation in emerging technologies allows both countries to improve their counter terrorism capabilities sharing intelligence and developing technologies for surveillance and reconnaissance then technological edge in defense is another key significance collaborations in ai and cyber security under icet can lead to advancements in autonomous systems and robust cyber defenses then economic and industrial benefits are substantial icet promotes partnership between defense industries encouraging joint ventures co-production and co-development leading to economic growth and job creation in both countries apart from this diplomatic and strategic autonomy is enhanced through icet representing a 
diversification of india's defense partnership and reducing dependency on any small country the partnership reinforces shared democratic values and mutual strategic interest providing a framework for cooperation in the face of global challenges lastly technology transfer and export controls are also major significance the initiative can lead to the relaxation of us export controls on sensitive technologies enabling india to access critical technologies more easily these are all the significance of icet in deepening engagement between india and the united states we on to the conclusion part here you can write that the initiative on critical and emerging technologies stand as a pivotal framework for deepening the strategic partnership between india and us by facilitating advanced technology transfer joint development projects icet not only strengthens bilateral defense ties but also reinforces regional stability in, in the indo pacific so you can write these points for this particular question so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion look at this article this article talks about how the informal sector of the nation has been affected due to the macroeconomic shock since 2016 in the form of demonetization introduction of gst and outbreak of covid-19 so without further ado let us see what is an informal sector according to international labor bureau informal sector is the part of the economy where all the economic activities of workers and economic unit that are in law or in practice not covered or insufficiently covered by formal arrangements in 2023 80 percentage of india's workforce was employed in the informal sector there are three types of workers in informal sector firstly informal workers they are hired by employers to finish a part or for the whole production process secondly subcontracted workers they are hired for a part of the production this will cut the production cost for the employer then freelancer these are individual or group of workers who mostly rely on their skill and knowledge these informal workers faces many challenges let us see them one by one first is invisibility most of the business entities do not have information or data about the workers this make them invisible and prevent their access to protection of law and social security schemes secondly low wages according to ilo 60% of the informal workers are not getting their minimum wage thirdly the workers does not have a common platform to organize and stand for the demand finally they work in poor working condition which makes them exposed to high risk of health problems and even death for example workers in hazardous industries like cement and chemical industries according to india rating and research the estimated loss of the informal sector is 4.3 percentage of 2022 to 23 gdp or 11.3 lakh crore rupees this study also found that between 2016 to 17 and 2022 to 23 around 63 lakh informal enterprises were shut down and the job loss is estimated at 1 crore this shows how the informal sector has been affected by macroeconomic shock since 2016 this is what the article tries to convey to us so these learned points now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice question discussion look at this question here three schemes are given and you have to find how many of the schemes benefit informal workers see the correct answer here is option c all the three mn reka provides 100 day job whereas e shram portal is a open database for the informal workers to solve the problem of invisibility then the pradhan mantri e rojgar protsahan yojana provides incentives for creating of new jobs and also working for formalization of informal sector then look at this question which of the following is a joint defense exercise conducted regularly between india and the united states the correct answer is option c exercise malabar then look at this question you have to find which of the following statements about nanoparticles is true here the correct answer is option d nanoparticle have a high surface area to volume ratio look at this question about bio mining four options are given and you have to find which of them can be used for bio mining the correct answer is option d all of the above all plant fungi bacteria and archaea all can be used for bio mining finally look at this question about financial inclusion index two statements are given and you have to find which of the statements given above is or are correct 
first statement says financial inclusion index was developed in 2021 with 2019 as the base year see this statement is incorrect FII has no base year but it was developed in 2021 second statement is also incorrect quality has the least weightage that is 20 percentage while access and usage has 35 and 45 percentage respectively so the correct answer here is option D neither one nor two so with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel now thank you so much for listening